this morning. <laughs> okay. Well, hello, everyone. Hello. Right, so as you know, I'm going to talk about Quizlet. Um, I actually first encountered Quizlet last semester when I was taking Korean, and the professor for Korean was using Quizlet, and I found it really helpful. Mm. And then I thought, hey, I'm teaching reading. We do all this vocabulary. I'm going to try making it some sets. And uh, they seemed really useful. I've seen students practicing them here and there. Uh, and then Dawn once said that um, a student in level four said, like, where are the Quizlets for level four? And she said, like, well, Bill Price hasn't taught level four yet. Yes. <laughs> Although you actually had some Quizlets for the core vocabulary. Even yeah, I did teaching for the it. core vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because those are all centralized. That's a pretty small set. So I just did that, you know, practicing, making them. Yeah. All right. So if you haven't seen a Quizlet page before, this is what it first looks like when they first just click onto it. So there's this little flashcard kind of interface. So Bill, first, I'm sorry, is this something you have to log into and have a password and all that? They don't need to have passwords or anything like that. To actually make a set, you need to have an account. Okay. But students can log on and study it, and they don't need any kind of account or password, which is one of the selling points, I think. Mm -hmm. So they're the most simple thing. It just has the word and definition. And it also has, let me see if I have my sound on. Okay. You can also click to hear the words. Compensate. It, it can sound a little strange. <laughs> to replace or balance the effect of something bad. And so on. Of course, we have all these words like conduct and conduct, where it's not going to know what part of speech we want. That's a limitation, but it's still pretty neat. Uh, and then one last thing on this main page. Um, so originally it was showing both the word and the definition. If you uncheck that, it'll just show the definition or it'll just show the word. Cool. Then you have to click to flip it. So that's the most simple kind of way to interact with the website. But what really sold me on it is that there are all these other things. So like for especially, I think, our Arabic-speaking students. Ha, 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 ha. Implement. Mm. So we heard implement. We see a definition. So if I say implement. Implement. I M P L E M E N T. Implement. So it reads it out. It also, uh, for an incorrect letter, it'll strike it through with red and then replace it with green, underlined, and all that. So cool. all this visual and audio feedback. And then, uh, you know, the words that they do better on um, won't be shown as often, and the words that they have trouble with will be brought back again and again until they can spell it correctly. So that's can one. you hide the definition on the speller? On the speller? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, yeah, because it's really not uh, testing. It's not needing to test the word, just the spelling. But there is this um, learn mode. So I just clicked on learn, and here it says very different from each other. Um, I think that's probably diverse. Mm -hmm. Level five, core vocabulary, weeks eight to 11, I'll yeah. try that. Yeah, so that was correct. But you don't have a word bank that they can access. The, the word bank is just implicit in whatever the set of words is. That's always a problem with vocabulary practice like this. Um, assuming that they have the words. Yeah, okay. yeah, so this assumes that the students oh, are already fine. familiar with the list and they are at least going to be able to um, think of which core vocabulary word best fits the definition. And uh, like in this case, there are 20 words on the list. That's actually unusually large um, uh, because I was just going by the uh, quiz schedule and at least for what I saw for reading five, they had weeks 8, 9, 10, and 11 all together. Usually it's just two or three of the weeks. That is a lot. Hey, Bill, can they uh, give a hint like the first letter? Um, I don't think that there's anything like that. No. No, I, I don't see anything like that on the page. So here, there's uh, the chase or follow someone. I guess that's probably pursue. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to type, just, you know, banana. <laughs> so there. It shows what they typed, it shows the correct answer, and if they just misspelled it, mm -hmm. if they knew the word, they just misspelled it or something like that, they can click this override to say, like, I, I was right, I knew 
the word, I just I just type something wrong, you know. Because in this case, it's not testing the spelling; it's testing whether they know the word, whether they can remember the word. And uh, the same sort of thing applies here. The things that they get incorrect come back more often, so that they practice them. The things that they get correct just kind of get shuffled down. They don't have to do those over and over again. Mm -hmm. And the override would wouldn't apply if they did something like pursuit. They would say, like, yes, I got it right, and override it. Right? Uh, the, the, the system wouldn't recognize pursuit and pursuit. Meaning. Um, it probably would not recognize it. Um, we might be able to try something. So the relationship pursuit. between two things, I'm going to guess that's proportion, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, Yeah, all right, so... Since the form, it doesn't recognize Yeah, it didn't recognize the adjective form. But yeah, I could say override, I was right. Yeah. Don't punch. So it does count it then as a correct one. Yeah, yeah, so it counted it as correct. Uh, and then what I really love, this is probably my favorite thing, <laughs> is this test thing. So um, some of these... Like true or false doesn't really work well. You probably can't read this very well. Then, yeah. Perfect. Impose, and then there's like a just definition. I don't really like the true false. It doesn't work well with vocabulary. So I go over here. I uncheck true false. Um, and I think that well, we'll keep written, matching, and multiple choice. We're prompting them with the definition. <laughs> And there, just generated a test of the 20 words. Again, that's a little bit bigger than usual. Usually 15 is a good size. But so there are seven where they have the definition and they just have to type in, or if you print it, write in the correct word. Seven matching. And then six multiple choice, where there's a definition and then four of the core vocabulary words. So if they do this in there, they put their answers right in instead of you printing out the quiz, it'll grade it like it did the other little quiz. That's right, yeah. So it would take a while for me to answer 20 questions, but yeah, if you click check answers at the bottom, uh, it, it you know, shows them so what they got right, what they got wrong. It just gives a score? It shows it, all It shows everything, yeah, yeah. And also, um, every time you go to this page, it makes a new test. So see, the first one right now says to combine two or more things, etc. If I click Regenerate Test, it scrambled the words all up again. They're likely in different sections, in different orders. And yes. so if you had people in the lab practicing vocabulary, they would all have a completely different quiz, completely different order. Wow. Still the same material, but everything scrambled for every single person. So that's the test. Uh, there are also these games. So there's the scatter game. Uh, so let's see, to completely change the appearance, form, or character, that's transform. Very different from each other. Diverse. Yeah, the idea there is to hopefully have students be competitive with each other, you know. If they do have accounts, um, like a, a, a leaderboard can appear showing like, you know, who's the fastest on this, <laughs> and who's the most accurate on this, and who has studied the most. I haven't really used those kinds of social features in my class. Mm -hmm. But um, they do exist. And there's also a space race where they actually type the word. So the definition starts going across. <laughs> to prevent something from having any effect. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Eight. Oh, that was right. Okay. Increase something. Uh, that's outside. Maxify. No, that was wrong. So deducts points. It doesn't slow down. It, it gets faster over time. Uh, unify. Unify, I guess. Uh, Inevitable. Uh, nice. And so on. Look at those points. And again, there's like a high score section if people do have accounts. So this is assuming they can read that quickly. What are the kills? Is that one of Yeah, it'd be smart? difficult. It'd be difficult. <laughs> I think it's that long. So then um, I'm just going to just briefly look at these. So there's a print section. And this is great if you just want to do an activity in class. So maybe something like this mm -hmm. format would be useful. You know, either if you're going to like fold it and tape it to make flashcards, or if you're just going to cut it down the middle and then maybe scramble them up, hand them out, and say, okay, nice. you have 
to replace or balance the effect of something bad, go find the person in the room who has compensated. Right. That's right. Yeah, so they have these different formats. They have, uh, you know, this table that's short for printing. Um, a glossary, which is very similar to the table, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then they just have three, uh, or actually, no, they have small, uh, you know, kind of flashcard kind of things. The large version. And then I don't think we have the ability to print on index cards, but this is the size mm -hmm. for index cards if we had a printer yes. for those. So when you input the definitions, do you have to type or can you copy that from something? Yeah, that's actually what I'm going to show next. Cool. We're actually uh, very close to the next. There are a couple other interesting features. Um, so if a student wants to practice all of the core vocabulary for the level at the end of the semester, if they want to, they can click Combine here. And then search for the other sets. So for me, because I made them, they're going to be over here. But they can search ELI core vocabulary. And so let's see, this was level five, we say to 11. So let's say level five, level five, level five. Oh, that one got repeated once. Yeah. I'm not sure if we can rearrange these. Yeah. Well, that's okay. And they can create a new set or they can generate a giant test or whatever. So this exists, they can just mix and match things from any set, even mix things from different classes. Uh, there are all kinds of ways to combine or split apart the Quizlet sets. So now I want to show how you make a new one. So nobody sent me any vocabulary lists, so I just took the reading for jump drive. I haven't changed anything on it. So this is very like real world situation right now. I'm going to click on create. Uh, and discard that. Uh, there's the virus scan for the Reading 4 jump drive. I um, just want to cancel that for now. So here's the Reading 4. Reading Explorer 4. I'll click into Unit 1. Uh, let's go to the vocabulary chart. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten words. That's a good size. We have the part of speech and the definition. So all that we want is the word and the definition. So what I'm going to do is I'll uh, click at the heading there. Now, why isn't that good? Right click. Here we go. I'll say delete that row. <coughs> I'll delete the column parts of speech. And then I'll just copy all of this. And now here, so this is going to be um, ELI reading for unit 1A. I'll just say ESL for the subject. It doesn't really need a description. And now because I'm pasting something in, I'm going to hit this import data button. And I'm just going to paste it right in there. It comes out looking a little bit messy. But all that I really have to do is to make sure that the word and the definition are on the same line. So there's already a tab put in there because they were from a table. And when you paste a table into plain text, it comes out as a tab. So I'm going to just do that for each of these. So commence has its definition. Contagious is with its definition now. Embrace, ferry, flee, navigate, overlap. Whoops, philosopher. Mm -hmm. I accidentally deleted the tab. So I'm just going to copy and paste the tab.
trees resemble. And now I'm going to click. So it shows a little preview saying, based on this, this is what it's going to look like. So we have our word, we have our definition, so that looks good. Click import. We look down, so there is a little glitch. So for philosopher, there was a, 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 a line return mm -hmm. in the definition. So I'm just going to cut and paste that, delete this row, and there we have our 10 words. Holy cow. So like once you have some practice with it, it really is just like two minutes to just paste it in, fix up any little formatting things. Uh, then the last step for that, um, remember the text to speech, it has to know what language we're using. So we just click English, English. And that's it, it's done. So we have all the words. Well, one actually one other small step that I do is I try to make sure that the definition does not use the word itself. Mm -hmm. That sometimes happens in the Longman Dictionary. If there isn't mm -hmm. contagious. Yes, if a whatever is mm -hmm. whatever. Right. Or if you whatever, you. Right. So I, I'll reword it in those cases. But um, other than that, it's all done. And all the stuff that I showed you a minute ago with the other set, yes, it's all set up and ready to go. Nice. You can print it any way you want. You can do generate tests. Um, I liked doing this sometimes um, in my reading class a day or two before one of the core vocabulary quizzes. I just give them one of these. They're very simple. I mean, it's not like a closed exercise or anything. It is just words and definitions. I give it to them just as practice so they could get a sense. You say you give it to them. Do you put it up on the screen for them to play with or are you in the lab or? Ideally, I would love to be in the lab. <laughs> we tend to have a very tight schedule. Yeah. Um, so in that case, I would just click on print this test. Yeah. It makes just a printed version. Uh, and I just give it out in class. Can they get it on their smartphones if they can't get in the lab? Yes, yes, that's... <laughs> Everybody has one, you know? You're also prescient. That was the next thing I wanted to show. <laughs> so I have my... Um, yes. So I've, I've mentioned before that I started this blog for technology and education things. I love the, the old diagram. So that's what the handout is. It's just my blog entry about Quizlet. But um, one thing I have here is, you know what, I'm skipping ahead a half a step. Let's go back to this set. So you can just give this link to your students. You can email it to them, put it on CourseWeb, put it in PowerPoint, whatever. Another thing you can do, though, is, um, oops. <laughs> you are very quick. There he is. Uh, just go to um, Google okay. and you can go to a QR code generator. It's a QR code. So a QR code is basically like a barcode <laughs> that the phone can scan and they can hold um, web addresses. So I just pasted this in. This is the set I just made. Reading for unit 1A. Generate. So now if we wanted to, we could just save this image and put it into a document or PowerPoint or whatever, just like a normal picture. And now that we have that, so I'll show you two different things. So I have my iPad here. I'm going to... This is doable, it's totally insane. So I have this so scanning good. app. I'm just going to point it at the screen. It caught it, and there it is. No way! <laughs> and usually the scanning apps are free, too. Oh, yeah. yeah I know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 can you do that on a phone? Yep, that's yeah. my next step. And you don't have to pay for the scanning app, it's free. Mm -hmm. So I have another one wow. for my phone. <laughs> You don't even have to be like right I'm up against so it. to be alive to know this. <laughs> Gee. And wow. you can't really see it because it's a small screen, but yeah, it's, it's right there. But they, but they do. They sit there with the teeny tiny prints. Oh, oh, oh. Might as well use the silly things if they're going to have them in class. Oh, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, I think just this technology deserves a mini workshop in and yeah. of itself. Yeah. Like, I, I know the QR codes end up in the ELA news sometimes. Like, some of us know how to make them and use them. Um, but 
they're just absurdly simple and really useful. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you just went on Google and just typed QR code generator? Uh, yeah, I don't have any specific site that I normally go to. There are tons of websites that generate them. It's just an open standard. Okay. So. And then you just put the you just put the web address in there. Yeah, I just pasted it, it right in. Click generate. <laughs> and um, so I can just save the image. I'll just save it to the desktop here. Um, and it's just a picture. So it can just be pasted into any document or what, you know, wherever you like, When picture. I put some in the ELI news, if it doesn't look as clear in there, they can still do it from that? Oh, yeah, it's, you, it's a very forgiving. Um, so they're just called QR. But what's codes. the website? Oh, um, just Google QR gen, QR code generator. That's all I did. Yeah, this is Kaiwa, I guess. Kaiwa. I love your pen. Sorry. It's not purple. I love it. All right, so I showed you something students can do with Quizlet. I showed you how to make a set. And my brain is full. And then at the end showed this, like how you can distribute it, either just giving them the link, which is very simple, of course, or if you just make a picture like this, a QR code. Um, if you do the QR code, you should also have the address for students who don't have a phone or whatever who can do that. Um, there are a few. But for those who, who do have a phone with that capability, uh, it's just, it's much easier than trying to type in a long address. Mm -hmm. It just takes, well you saw with the iPad, I just held it up and there it was. Now, questions. the actual setup, Bill, is it easy to get in and set up your own, like, I'm sure that it's all in there, to set up your own account? Is that a real simple procedure? Because yeah, Quizlet is some one of the, the things that we've done and how to do are not easy to do. Yeah. Quizlet is one of the many websites where you can literally just log in with Facebook. You don't okay. even have to set up Perfect. a new account. And it's, uh, is that bit dot ly or uh, one y? Dot ly, yeah. Thank you. What is that? Because I see that on a lot of things now. It's a link shortener. So that way, it's a what? It's a link shortener. The bit dot ly is oh, bitly. Uh, so what did I call it? Eli Quizlet. Then it goes to the full web page. I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like So Bill, you said students you don't it? have to log in. <laughs> students do not have to log in. So anyone, anyway, this is accessible okay. publicly. And yeah. yeah. Is there a way to limit it? Um, there are ways to limit it. Um, I haven't really played around with that, but I know things can be made completely private or just to people that you invite. Some of these things, if you're using some of this for class, for grades, and vocabulary exercises, if you don't necessarily want to help to everybody. Yeah, I've never actually used Quizlet for a grade, though. For that? Just for practice? Yeah, just performative stuff. Practice. Quizlet, you can create graded activities with. Oh, not there yet. I'm still fighting with cool. setting this up around. Yeah. That is very cool. It's fun, yeah. I think it's It looks like it would be fun. But to have time to play with it. But it's so it's easy to cut and paste so in there. Cool. That's yeah, what I was concerned cool. about. It's like if you have to type it like those puzzle makers, you have to type all that <laughs> stuff in. Nope. Sometimes, yeah. So just to but very quickly say it, one you more time. Because it doesn't handle that well. Because this is easy to miss. When you first click on, it just looks like this. It looks like you have to type it, but there's that import, import data. data. That's nice. the important button to remember. Yeah. And then you paste it into here. You get the preview there um, to see if it's lining up the way it should. And there are all kinds of different options. So if there's a tab between them, like I, I did because it was a table in the yeah. Microsoft Word document, but you could have just a comma and it shows you a sample of what it should look like, term one, comma, definition one, et cetera. Okay. So pretty much any format it came in, you know, this can, uh, this can handle. All right. Excellent. Yes, thank you. Cool. That's how you play with it. Thank you all. Thank you. Oh boy. Now those columns that you cut out of that, from the reading part of the actual document, are you cutting it out of there? Oh, I didn't save the document. Oh, I did. So I'm going to quit now. It's going to ask me. I'm just going to say don't save. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Make sure that people don't accidentally. Yeah.
break the original yeah, five. Yeah, you got a little to play with. How's the baby? Thank you. Yes, the baby is. Not yet, right? We're not quite ready. Oh, baby can come in each minute. How do we feel about this? Um, well, I don't know.